This FizCast will apply Newton's second law of motion in its rotational form. Pause the video for a moment and read the question carefully. Now that you've read the question, let's determine exactly what's being asked and some of the information that's being provided. The question at the end is asking how long it takes for the rotation in this problem to stop. That's a length of time we're looking for. And some of the information that's provided has to do with the mass and dimensions of a particular object and something about how it's rotating initially and finally and then there's a force that's being applied at a particular location on this object and all of these will be very useful in solving the problem. Let's begin by interpreting what's happening in the question. The object here, a cylindrical satellite, is rotating but importantly it's changing how it's rotating. So if we have a changing rotation that tells us we must have some kind of angular acceleration occurring. And that acceleration must be caused by a net torque acting upon the object. Now that net torque in this case is coming from some forces that are constant both in their magnitude and their application so we should expect to have constant torque and constant angular acceleration. And that means we can look at this problem being ultimately solved to calculate a time by using our equations of motion for constant acceleration. Now let's develop the question a little. And as we often do, it's good to start by drawing a diagram. Here is our cylindrical satellite, looked end on. Um, it will have a particular mass, capital M, it will have a radius, capital R, and it has some initial angular velocity, omega naught. Something else is happening, of course. The question says there are two rockets on opposite sides firing tangentially, that is, applying a force at a tangent to this. Um, and so they must be applying some force, for example, in that direction on that side and in that direction on that side in order to slow down this, uh, this rotating satellite. We have quite a bit of information here that we can now uh, write down. We know that the mass is 940 kilograms. We know that the radius actually isn't given to us directly. We're told it's a 1.4 diameter, so we need to make sure we remember to divide by 2 so that we know the radius here is 0.7 meters. Uh, there's some forces being applied, and each of those forces is in fact 20 newtons in magnitude. We know the initial angular velocity here is 10 rpm, that's revolutions per minute, which we can then write in our, in our preferred units. One revolution is 2 pi radians, and if we're dividing by a minute, that's dividing by 60 seconds, and that gives us an initial angular velocity of 1.05 radians per second. The object is coming to rest, so we know that the final angular velocity will be zero. And what we're looking for here, the things we're trying to find, are of course the time that it takes, that's ultimately what the question is asking, and to get there we'll almost certainly need to know what the angular acceleration is that's slowing it down. Now we can move on to the evaluation step. Importantly, the first thing we need to find will be the angular acceleration. That angular acceleration is being caused by these forces acting on our satellite some distance away from the axis of rotation and that's giving rise to a torque tau. And indeed our net torque acting on our system here by Newton's second law in its rotational form will be I, the rotational inertia, multiplied by alpha, the angular acceleration. And our net torque in this instance in fact will be the sum of two torques because there are two rockets giving rise to a force here. We can see from the symmetry of the problem that in fact those two torques will be equal to each other and they'll be equal to the size of the force multiplied by the location from the axis, in this case the radius of the object, multiplied by the sine of the angle between those two. And because we're told these rockets are firing tangentially, that tells us that the angle between the force and the radius will actually be 90 degrees. And so that torque there will in fact simply be the force multiplied by the radius, and therefore our net torque 
will simply be twice the force times the radius. So if that's the net torque, we will also need to know the rotational inertia of the object if we're going to calculate the angular acceleration. We're told it's a cylindrical object with its mass distributed uniformly. So we could think of that as this thing here has a uniform distribution of mass. It's essentially a solid cylinder. And we can look up our, our table of rotational inertia formulae and find that for a solid cylinder it's equal to a half the mass times the square of the radius. So if we now take that expression for our rotational inertia and this expression for our net torque we can see that we can rewrite Newton's second law that the angular acceleration will be the net torque divided by the rotational inertia and for us that will be 2fr divided by a half mr squared and we can simplify a few things there we will end up with 4 times the force divided by the mass times the radius. Let's move our screen up a little here to give us some more space to write. That's now the angular acceleration. Uh, we want to find the time that it takes for this satellite to come to rest. So we might use an equation of motion for constant angular acceleration that tells us the final angular velocity will equal the initial angular velocity plus the angular acceleration multiplied by time and we can rearrange that because the thing we're looking for is the time that will be the change in angular velocity divided by the angular acceleration. Importantly here our change in angular velocity will in fact be negative because our final angular velocity is zero and that tells us that in fact our angular acceleration must indeed be a negative quantity. The direction of the angular acceleration is in the opposite direction to the direction of our initial angular velocity. So indeed when we write this down now we will have minus omega naught divided by minus 4f over m times r. Moving our screen up a little bit further and rearranging this we can find that our time will now be omega naught m r divided by 4f and putting numbers into all of these quantities that's 1.05 times 940 kilograms times 0 0.7 meters for the radius divided by 4 times 20 newtons for the force and all of that comes out to give us 8.6 seconds. That's how long it takes. Now of course we would like to do an assessment step at the end here. Let's see if this expression that we have here seems to make sense. If the satellite had been spinning faster to begin with, say twice as fast, it would take twice as long to slow down. That, that makes sense. And if the force supplied by each of those rockets was larger, of course on the bottom line here a larger number means it would take a shorter time. And that makes sense if we apply a larger torque by having a larger force, we expect the time to be shorter.